In our last segment here, dealing with complex numbers, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing complex numbers in polar form. And we're going to finish with adding and subtracting, even though it's very difficult to add and subtract in polar form. We're going to do this because we're going to um, end up with a project involving electronics and um, complex numbers in that project for resistance and impedance and current and voltage, etc. And, and so we're going to learn these four operations, multiply, divide, add, and subtract, in order to see its application when we do the project in class. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply and divide complex numbers, then we'll raise them to a power in both exponential and polar form. I meant to say, as I introduced here, that we're also going to take square roots, cube roots, fifth roots, etc. of complex numbers. I did say that we're going to add and subtract, but typically um, when it's in polar form, you got to get it into rectangular form anyway to do, so we'll have to be um, reviewing processes that we already know. So let's take a minute to understand why when you multiply complex numbers in either polar or exponential form that you will always multiply their R values and add their angles. So we're going to go to um, just plain old algebra problem. So when we take 3x squared and multiply that by 5x to the fourth power, we know that we multiply the 3 times the 5 and we get 15. And because the x's, the bases, are alike, we will add their exponents. 2 plus 4 is 6. And we're all done. So if I were to take 3e to the 2j power and multiply it by 5e to the 2j power, just like above, the 3 times 5 would be 15. And um, I meant to make this uh, a 4j, just like the, pro the 4 up here. So um, I'm going to make that a 4j. And then I would add the exponents. 2j plus 4j is 6j. So just like the algebra problem in exponential form, they behave the same way. Well, remember that the only difference between this form and this form is that this angle right here is in radians. So to perform this process in polar form like this, we will still take, when we multiply r sub 1 at an angle of theta by r sub 2 at an angle of theta, we will still multiply their r values, r1 times r sub 2, but as their angles go, we're going to add theta sub 1 and theta sub 2. I would probably myself put this on my note card that I'm preparing um, for the test over this unit so that when you multiply in either polar or exponential form, you multiply the R values and you add the angles. It's a very simple process that, therefore, you know, in comparison, so if I was multiplying in rectangular form, remember if I had like 3 plus 4j times a negative 2 plus 7j, I got to FOIL this. So 3 times a negative 2 is a negative 6. Here I get 21j. Here I get a minus 8j. And 4j times 7j is 28j squared. Remember, j squared is equal to a negative 1. So this is 28 times a negative 1. So that becomes a negative 28. A lot of work foiling. This negative 6 and negative 28 add to be a negative 34. I believe this is a 21j minus 8j. So I think that's going to be a 13j. So there we are multiplying in rectangular form. But in this form, you just have to multiply the 12 times 11. So you have to multiply these r values. And the angle of 47 degrees and 112 degrees, you just have to add. So my answer for this is 132 at an angle of 159 degrees. Don't forget, that's the abbreviation. What it means is 132 times the cosine of 159 degrees plus j times the sine of 159 degrees. So don't forget, that's what it means. But the abbreviation is perfect. So go ahead, stop the video, do this one real quickly. Again, you multiply the R values, and then you add the angles. 
and 32 times 0.75 is 24, and 157 plus 62 is 219 degrees. All done. So let's look at dividing complex numbers in polar form. And let's take a minute to understand again why. So if we had 12 e to the 5j power, and we wanted to divide that by 3 e to the 2j power, we would take the 12 and divide it by 3 and get the number 4. But because these bases are alike, we would subtract their exponents. So 5j minus 2j is 3j, and we're done. So in exponential form, we divide the r values. So when we take r sub 1 at an angle of theta sub 1, and r sub 2 at an angle of theta sub 2, and we want to divide them, we actually divide the r values. So we took the 12 divided by 3. But as the angles go, because they're based on this exponential form, the bases are alike, you subtract the angles. 5 is in radians, 5j, 2j. So you subtract theta sub 1 minus theta sub 2. I would put this on my note card, and it says when I divide in exponential, but I'm going to be asking you polar form. So here's polar form. So you want to divide these R values. You want to go 12 divided by 6, which will be 2. And then you've got to start with the angle in the numerator. So you've got to take the 70 degrees and subtract the 110 degrees. So the 12 divided by 6 is 2. But the angle here would be a negative uh, 40 degrees. So remember, a negative 40 degrees in the rectangular coordinate system means from the x-axis to go clockwise 40 degrees. So there's your 40 degrees, negative. So if you went counterclockwise, 360 minus 40 is also a coterminal angle of 320 degrees. Stop the video, please, and do the next couple. Actually, about three. Okay, so number 4, 42 divided by 6 would be 7, and then you just take 270 degrees and subtract 153 degrees. So again, 7, and then our angle would be 117 degrees. Please don't forget, this means 7 times the cosine of 117 plus j times the sine of 117. If you needed that in re rectangular form, you could just get your calculator out and multiply 7 times the cosine of, cosine of 117 and 7 times the sine of 117, if you needed it in rectangular form. The next one, 12 divided by 5, is 2.4, I believe. And then 292 degrees minus a negative 96 degrees, which means to add. So um, the 12 divided by 5, I'm going to write as 2.4. When you take 292 and add 96, you get 388 degrees, but that's bigger than 360 degrees. So let's subtract the full 360 degrees so that we can report this as an acute. So it's reduced, that's all. So in a reduced angle of 28 degrees. You can do number 6 in any way. I kind of prefer to work these up here first. So I would multiply these. So in the numerator, 25 times 6, I believe, is 150. And then the angles of 194 and 239 will get added together. Let's go ahead and finish that. So that's 150 is the R value. And I have an angle of 433 degrees. Downstairs. 30 times 10. I'm multiplying my R values. It's going to give me 300. And then I'm going to add 17 degrees and 29 degrees. So again, the denominator is 300. And the angle 17 plus 29 uh, is 46 degrees. You can either reduce this 433 by subtracting 360 from it. Or you could subtract these two numbers. What I did is I went ahead and called the 433 degrees. I went ahead and called it 73 degrees because I subtracted 360 from it. And then I was more easily able to subtract um, 73, take away 46. And so I got for my final answer, I'm going to go this way with it. I got 1 half, or 0 0.5, at an angle of 
27 degrees. Again, it could be written as 0.5 at an angle of 27 degrees. Pretty simple to multiply and divide in polar form. Multiply, you multiply the R values and add the angles because they behave like, like exponents. And then when you divide, divide the R values and subtract the angles.